power of Christmas, which is actually the power of the birth of Christ. And the objective is simple to understand the power of his birth, and secondly, to understand access to that power. We shall understand the power of his birth and we shall understand what it takes to access that power. In Luke chapter 2, if we start from verse 8 thereabouts, it said, And there were shepherds, they were in the same country, shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were so afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you, you shall find a babe wrapped in swaddling cloths, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of, of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace, goodwill toward men. And it came to pass as the angels were gone away from them into heaven, the shepherds said one to another, Let us now go even unto Bethlehem and see this thing which is come to pass, which the Lord has made known unto us. And they came with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. The Lord bless his word in Jesus' name. There are two significant things in the history of mankind. Two significant events in the history of mankind where God manifested his power in very unusual ways. The first was the conception and birth of Jesus Christ and the second was the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. God manifested his power in very unusual ways, very drastic ways. In the conception and birth of Jesus and also in the death and resurrection of his son. Challenge is that many times we celebrate the power of his resurrection. We stand in awe of the power of resurrection. But we undermine and underplay the power of his conception and birth. But the conception and the birth of Jesus Christ came forth with awesome manifestation of power. And we're going to look at five of them. What kind of power do we see? Did we see in the conception and birth of Jesus? Number one is the power of supernatural conception. The power of supernatural conception. That is the power of a pregnancy that was not normal. The power of a pregnancy that was not usual. And under the power of supernatural conception, I want to address three things. First, It is the, the divine human incarnation. I am not talking of reincarnation because there's nothing like that. The divine human incarnation. 
What is that? It is the process of the Son of God becoming the Son of Man. It's a miracle. When the Son of God became the Son of Man, it was something that was practically impossible. When the divine became human and the celestial became the terrestrial, it was unusual, it was unnormal, it was an impossibility. When deity became humanity, when divinity became humanity, It is higher than, listen, that is inside human flesh, the immeasurable God became captured. Inside the body of the earth, the one who sits in the heaven, and the earth is his full tool became encapsulated like i say it is a more serious miracle than if an ant swallowed an elephant it is a more serious miracle than when a fly should have, should be pregnant with an eagle It's a more serious miracle than if the Atlantic Ocean should be emptied into a Coca-Cola bottle. It is, I mean, I'm talking of the immeasurable God, the omnipresence becoming trapped in a body of flesh. The one that is everywhere at every time now becoming located in one place at a time. It was as if the Mount Everest was swallowed up by a piece of dust. If that is not a miracle to you, then nothing will be a miracle. That is to show you the God who can do, undo, overdo, extra, do, mega, do, super, do, supra, do. Am I speaking to somebody here at all? It is that it is it is I want your 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 your, your mental capacity to become elasticized. You need an elasticity of mentality to be able to comprehend the possibilities of divinity. Say that again. You need an elasticity of mentality to comprehend the possibilities of divinity. But anything. It's possible if God the Son can become the Son of Man, anything is possible. Mary became pregnant with the one who created her. Jesus is the word that upholds all things by the word of his power. Mary was carrying the one, carrying her. She thought she carried the pregnancy. She never knew the pregnancy carried her. That was what happened. If I see Mary in heaven, I will try to find out from her. How did you feel? Because I'm sure that angels were everywhere where Mary was. Because the host was there. Where the president is, the security must be found. I wanted to find out how, what kind of dreams did Mary dream? Carrying omnipresence, omniscience, omnipotence in a pregnancy. It was the power. It is... The divine human incarnation. What is the power of that supernatural conception? Secondly, it is the 
unnatural conception. The unnatural nature of the conception. So we are dealing with the divine incarnation. We are dealing with the unnatural conception. What do we mean? We read that in the seed of destiny. It, it, it meant, or it means, that it was a conception that did not follow the normal rules. The laws of reproduction broke. Biology broke. The male seed and the female seed must come together in order for there to be fertilization and then you have the zygote and the embryo and then the fetus and then the, the child later on. But this one, that process was bypassed. The angels, the Mary, Mary said, how shall this be? Seeing I know not a man. He said, we are not talking about man here. God wants to bypass man. And she conceived. It was unnatural. And thirdly, it was, it is the immaculate conception. What is called the immaculate. The sinless, stainless conception. The, the very first in history. That is what we're dealing with when we talk about the supernatural, the power of supernatural conception. Everybody was born in sin except the Son of God. The most anointed prophet, the most anointed apostle was still conceived in sin except the Son of God. That was the supernatural conception. What does this say to someone here today? It says connection to divinity is the doorway to unbelievable possibility. Connection to divinity is doorway to unbelievable possibility. Anything can happen with a man who is connected to God. I'm talking of positive. You cannot predict the events in the life of anybody connected to God. You cannot, you cannot fully comprehend, apprehend and understand or fathom or calculate or predict or prognosticate the events of the life of a man connected to God. Anybody who says he knows how your life will end is a liar. Because the future cannot be read from the face. A person that is connected, related, associated, intimated, acquainted with God. You cannot predict their moves. What, what we are sitting under here was not predictable. Unpredictable, sir. Under this kind of economy, how did they get the money? If we explain, you can't know. It's not a explainable. Tithes and offering can't handle it. Yes, sir. supernatural connection to source beyond the scope of human mentality is God speaking to somebody here at all what a mighty God we serve stop limiting your life stop hindering your life stop localizing your life for everyone that has a relationship and a connection with God, nobody has seen the best of your life yet. And I am speaking and prophesying and declaring for somebody in the name that is above every name. In this season that we are in right now, you are going to see the possibilities of God such as you have never seen before. You are saying amen, shout the loudest, amen. Take your seat in the presence of the Lord. Look at your neighbor. Say, so you have seen nothing yet. 
Say, I am connected to God. And out of my life, you have seen nothing yet. Does anybody believe that? If you believe that, say amen. apologize for the unusual if God chooses to do the unusual the impossible the incomprehensible the unbelievable the ununderstandable you owe no man or devil no explanation Mary did not go about explaining to people his brother, the brother, he came home he said what happened I met an angel and the angel said I'm pregnant. Explain. No explanation. How did it happen? I don't know. I just met an angel and the angel said I am pregnant. And I am pregnant. And it's not my fault. I didn't invite the angel. I didn't look for the angel. I only met the angel and he announced it and here it is. Take it or leave it. Believe it or disbelieve it. It changes nothing. Mary, how come you are pregnant? I don't know. All I know is that my husband met some angels. And they said according to the time of life, your wife will be pregnant. Mary, when was your last menstrual period? 45 years ago. And you say you are pregnant? Yes. How? I don't know. Mary, I'm sorry. I'm talking of Sarah. 45 years ago, Sarah. Whew. Amen. You don't owe no devil, no man, any apology for experiencing the impossibilities of God. Am I communicating? There is no way a pilot can explain flight techniques to a dog for it to understand how did you take the aircraft from the ground dog which language should I speak to you for your information in case you don't know the Bible say without our dogs take your seat <laughs> Is God speaking to somebody here? When Joseph dreamt a dream and the people didn't understand the dream, he dreamt more. Every time you see a possibility in God and people behave like they don't understand or they are angry with it, see more, move more, do more. Is God speaking to anybody here at all? Let's move to point number two. It is first of all, the power that we are dealing with is the power of supernatural conception. Number two is the power of prophetic fulfillment. The birth of Jesus came as a confirmation of the immutability, unchangeability, inflexibility of God's word the birth of Jesus Christ it came as a confirmation of the immutability the unchangeability the inflexibility of God's word what word was fulfilled in the birth of Jesus there are many, many words, but let me zero down on two. First, it is prophecy fulfilled about the virgin birth. It was a prophecy and it was fulfilled. Prophecy fulfilled about the virgin birth. In Isaiah chapter 7 verse 14, Isaiah chapter 7 verse 14, he said, Therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son. And shall call his name Emmanuel. This is a prophecy of almost 2,000 or more years or thereabout before the birth of Jesus. A virgin, a 
and the name of the child shall be called Emmanuel. Matthew chapter 1 verse 23, we see the prophecy fulfilled. He said, Behold, a virgin shall be with a child and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. Okay, yeah, oh. okay, yeah, oh. Hold another car. Okay, yeah, oh. okay, yeah, oh. okay, yeah, oh. Hold another car. Okay, yeah, oh. it go happen. It must happen. What father has said, it must happen, it go happen, it must happen. What the father said, it shall happen. Someone say amen. A virgin and a virgin brought forth now the second prophecy is more striking and that second is prophecy fulfilled about the place of birth the place of birth the place of birth in the book of micah chapter 5 verse 2 we saw a prophecy about the place of birth See that he said, But thou Bethlehem Ephrata, even though you are little among the thousands of Judah, yet out of you shall come forth unto me the one that is to be ruler in Israel. It's not talking about a human being. See, whose goings forth have been from of old, from everlasting. He's talking about. God the Son. Out of Bethlehem Ephrata. Jesus shall be born. How is this prophecy going to happen? Because Mary was from Nazareth. She conceived in Nazareth. Went somewhere to stay with her. Uh, a cousin Elizabeth for six months. and then, But Nazareth is her home. Now look at Luke chapter 2 from verse 1 and see how God orchestrates events in the fulfillment of prophecies. And it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus, the Roman emperor, that all the world should be tasked. Everybody go and be tasked. And this taxing was first made when Cyrenius was governor of Syria. And all went to be taxed, everyone into his own city. Literally speak like their capital city, let's say. And Joseph also went off from Galilee, Nazareth in Galilee, out of the city of Nazareth, where Mary was, where they lived, into Judea, unto the city of David which is called Bethlehem because he was of the house and lineage of David to be taxed with Mary, his spouse wife, being great with child. And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. Nobody saw what happened just now. Did you see what just happened? When Mary was pregnant by one month, there was no decree that they should go to their place to be counted and to pay tax. When the pregnancy was three months, no decree. When the pregnancy was seven months, no decree. When the time came when she should deliver, a law came that moved her to where the prophecy should be fulfilled. That law did not come when it was 11 months after she had delivered in Nazareth. 
that law did not come when it was 13 months when it was around time for her to deliver God moved on the emperor the president of the country to make a decree that will make Mary to be found where the prophecy predicted hey, hey. Hey, hey. There is an invisible walking in the visible realms of men. In the visible realms of men, there is an invisible walking. Am I communicating at all? Emperor Augustus may not know God, but God knows him. And God moved upon him. I don't know how he heard God. I don't know whether he saw a vision, but move now. Issue a decree now. Let everybody move to their places and to various municipalities now. And Mary and Joseph carried his wife to the place where the Bible said the Son of God must be born. And while their labor arrived, eh hey, eh hey. Me announce to somebody today Jehovah God is about to move in on your behalf that amen is too paralyzed it's about to move people on your behalf it's about to move systems on your behalf it's about to move institutions on your behalf until his word in your life comes to pass shout the loudest amen shout the loudest amen shout the loudest amen shout the loudest amen the most impossible person to be moved it's about to be moved on your behalf for the word of God to come to pass. Shout the Lord and say amen. Look at somebody say, God is about to move systems and move people on your behalf to bring his word to pass in your life. Take your seat. If this is the only message you came here to hear on this Christmas day, if God can move Caesar, he can move Hitler. Caesar didn't know what he was doing. Everybody around didn't know what he was doing. But God knew. Even Mary didn't know. Even Joseph did not know. Look at that. Luke chapter 2 from verse... What, let's look at around verse 4 or 5 again. And Joseph also went off from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth into Judea unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because of the, he was of the house and lineage of David, to be taxed with Mary, his part wife, being great with child. And so that it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. The Lord bless his word in Jesus' name. I'd like you to note this down. Every prophecy of God is history spoken in advance. History waiting to happen. I heard the first statement from Reinhard Bonke for the first time. It's history written in advance every prophecy is history waiting to happen let me say this god will always rearrange situations to line up with his promise to his people god will always rearrange situations to line up with his declarations to his people if god has spoken a word if god has uttered made a declaration he will always rearrange situations to line them up with his declarations to his people is god speaking to anybody here say aloud amen 
That's why the Bible says all things work together for good to them that love God. Even to them that are called according to his purpose. Beyond human visibility, there is divine activity. For the fulfillment of human destiny. Beyond human visibility. In the realm where you see nothing, there is something working. We shall see that in this season. Somebody say a loud amen. amen. That was number two. It was the power of prophetic fulfillment. That was the power of the Christmas. I speak to someone here by decree and declaration. Every word of God to you that appears to be delayed in this season of Christmas, it shall be fulfilled with accuracy. It shall arrive with speed. Shout the loudest. Amen. Every word of God, every vision, every revelation, every declaration that appears to be delayed, they shall be fulfilled with accuracy in Jesus precious name let me run or run and then see please take your seat and finish the rest is the power of prophetic fulfillment number three it is a power of supernatural delivery what was the power that happened at the birth of Christ first it was the power of supernatural conception then the power of prophetic fulfillment then the power of supernatural delivery beloved there was no record of a midwife no record of a traditional birth attendant no record of prolonged or complicated labor for somebody delivering for the first time all by herself it looks to me like the birth must have been attended to by angels the power of supernatural delivery every God everything God speaks he releases his hand to perform when the mouth of God speaks a word the hands of God moves to walk he didn't need a, a better attendant he didn't need uh, 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 a midwife since it was not a man that put in that pregnancy when the mouth of God speaks the hand of God walks when the mouth of God speaks the, the hand of God moves I might speak to someone here today whatever the mouth of God has spoken in your life the hand of God will move to perform it shout the loudest amen number four it was the power of supernatural sustenance the power of supernatural sustenance or sustenance that is preservation Jesus Christ was born in an in animal, animal house stable with the risk of all manner of infections airborne airborne diseases from animal droplets it was the most unhygienic place anybody could be born. But he, he was delivered on that ground. Maybe with goat droplets. Maybe with horse excreta. But he grew up with no trace of sickness and not a single day of hospitalization let me say this before i go forward where you were born is not as important as how you end he was born in a manger but he didn't live there he was born in a manger but he didn't die there How you began is not as important as how you finish. Your history is not as important as your destiny. Where you are coming from is not as important as where you are going to. Stop forever thinking about how you things were bad when you grew up or uh, your father was poor or this and that happened around you. They are not as important as what God has in mind for you in the future. Somebody say loud amen. 
He was born in the manger, but he's the king of kings and the lord of lords. The I am that I am, the soon coming king. And sometimes God hides greatness in small packages. Obscurity at times is the hiding place for notoriety. When God wants to give you unusual authority, at times he starts you with obscurity. So the, de the devil didn't see you coming. He didn't see you coming. All of a sudden you showed up. Then he wants to die of, 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 of convulsion. I'm not complicating at all. But this is the point. He was born in a place that he could have been born for death. Doctor, Doctor Becky, when you want to go to a newborn baby's special baby care unit in the hospital where they keep newborn babies, how do you enter there? You, you have to drape and you have to wear. You pull your shoes. Remove your shoes and wear the clinical boots that are kept at the entrance of the place. Already sterilized. You can't, you can't dress like this. In a standard hospital, you can't dress like this and go and see a newborn baby, a neonate, the place where they are by, especially those under 28 days. You pull everything, pull your shoes. Oh, yes. And wear... Oh, yeah. That is... The hospital was clean first. I'm talking of a teaching hospital, specialist hospital standard. The hospital was clean. The, the ground was swept with the clean, sterilized everywhere. And then you stepped in there, remove your shoe and put your boots and then look and then before you, you're going to see the newborn baby. Especially if the baby is under 20, 28 days and has some issues. Under 28 days. Now we are not, we are talking of animal poo poo. It's on the ground. The animals themselves, they did not that they drove the animals out. There was no room for them in the hotel. So the only room they found was where animals live. That was where the child was born. It dropped on animal ground. And yet, there was no devil demonic enough to afflict him. He killed the infections. As he landed, the gems died. <laughs> ay, 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 ay. Hey! Take your seat and don't forget this for life. If God is your source, you don't you won't have to beg him to be your sustainer. Amen. If God is your source, you won't need to beg him to sustain you. If you don't live for yourself, you don't keep yourself. The one who is your source is also your sustenance and sustainer. You have no devil to be afraid of if the Almighty is your source. The psalmist said, All day long I make my boast in the law. It was the power of super. Natural sustenance. If God calls you, He keeps you. If God helps you, He hides you. And if God hides you, no devil can find you. Somebody say, Amen. And finally, the power of the Christ is the power of supernatural conception, the power of prophetic fulfillment, the power of supernatural delivery, the power of supernatural sustenance, and finally, the power of supernatural announcement. 
there was no need for Mary to tell anybody who was born. <laughs> it was supernatural announcement. Su the supernatural publicity. Supernatural advertisement of who was born. Luke chapter 2 verse 8 all the way to verse 20 is a long reading but we'll read it he said and they were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field keeping watch over their flock by night and the angel of the lord came upon them and the glory of the lord shone round about them and they were so afraid and the angel said unto them fear not for behold i bring you good tidings of great joy which shall be to all people for unto you is born this day in the city of david the savior angel announcing the birth of a baby which is christ the lord and this shall be a sign unto you, you shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling cloths lying in a manger and suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising god and saying glory to god in the highest and on the earth peace goodwill toward men and it came to pass as the angels were gone away from them unto heaven the shepherds said one to another, Let us now go even unto Bethlehem and see this thing which is come to pass, which the Lord has made known unto us. Let us go. And they came with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in the manger. They were still lying, they were still lying in the animal farm. And when they had seen it, are you, are, you, are you watching? They made known abroad. The angel told them, they told everybody, the saying which was told them concerning this child and all they that heard it wondered at those things which were told them by the shepherds but mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart and the shepherds returned glorifying and praising god for all the things that they had heard and seen as it was told them now matthew chapter 2 verse 1 to 3 and then we shall begin to draw the curtain now when jesus was born in bethlehem of judea in the days of herod the king behold there came wise men from the east to jerusalem saying where is he that is born king of the jews for we have seen his star in the east another announcement and we are come to worship him and herod her can somebody say loud amen? amen please note what i'm about to say those who are on the earth to fulfill god's purpose access god's publicity anybody whose mission on earth is to fulfill God's purpose will access God's publicity. That is a, this is another way to say it. When your assignment is to give him fulfillment, he will give you announcement. If your assignment is to give God fulfillment with your life, he will release for you announcement. He will give you announcement. He will offer your announcement. He will announce you to your generation. All children were born, but those were born to fulfill either their own pleasures or parental pleasures, but this was a child born to fulfill the agenda of God and God announced him look at the old woman 100 years old today was shown this dome on her own when she saw the picture said no this is not here it is not here I saw it on the other side angels were everywhere they were walking and she came in the physical to see it God is showing this place to people there are many people who came to this church not because of a handbill but because there was an announcement i dreamt a dream i saw a vision i had a revelation i have seen people who came to this old newcomers line here in those days so you invited me to church you say i should meet you today i have come the person was talking to me as if i should continue from where we stopped in the dream 
to struggle to make yourself known if you want to make God known. I have just said something. You don't need to struggle to make yourself known if you have a passion to make God known to your generation. I'm not looking for publicity. I'm not looking for a name. I'm not looking for a title. We have never made up our mind build a church that anybody can call is the biggest or one of the biggest in the in the world we have never privately or secretly had it as an ambition never it happened on us we happened to be on on God's assignment there was a necessity for something like that to be built and it happened to become not by a deliberate design we have had people look for us that we didn't struggle to look for there are people that others look for who look for us don't struggle to know people struggle to know God and he will make people struggle to know you Don't waste your time hanging around and struggle for for the applause of a man. Can you give me my can you give me your complimentary card? Ask God to give you his own complimentary card. See what he will do for you and that complimentary card is nothing but his presence. Somebody say amen. amen. Somebody say a louder amen. amen. I can tell you that God can announce your business. If that business is kingdom oriented. Amen. God can announce your career. Announce everything about your life. If it is centered around God. You want to glorify God with your life. And glorify God with your energy. And glorify God with your time. And glorify God with your resources. And glorify God. He will make your world to struggle to know you. Somebody say a loud amen. In all humility, I have never struggled for an appointment with any political office holder. Not then, not now, not tomorrow. That is, I'm struggling. I want to meet so and so person. With all due respect, we give honor to whom honor is due. We honor the leaders in our land and we pray that they succeed. But we have never will never look up to any mortal man on account of position or means not one somebody say loud amen. amen somebody say the loudest amen, amen. somebody say the loud most amen. amen i prophesy to somebody today in this season that we are in where you couldn't have advertised or announced yourself jehovah god will announce you announce your life announce your destiny announce you on every side you are a believer shout the loudest amen shout the loud most amen look at your neighbor say get ready for divine announcement take your seat in the presence of the lord hallelujah did anybody get anything today? Are you ready for that power of the Christmas? I give you two secrets. What is the secret of this power? Luke chapter 1 verse 34 and 35. Mary said unto the angel, How shall this be seen? I know not a man. And the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon you. And the power of the highest shall overshadow thee therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee 
shall be called the son of God. The Holy Ghost shall come upon you and the power of the highest shall overshadow. Secrets to power, to the power that was responsible for his conception and birth, number one, being overwhelmed by the Holy Spirit. Being overwhelmed. Holy Spirit, move me now. Make my life whole again. Spirit, move over me. Spirit, move over me. Spirit, Holy Spirit, move me now. Make my Spirit, move. Spirit, move. All over me. That is a life that is yielded, a life that is overwhelmed. And the Holy Spirit is the companion of those who understand communion. Worship, intimacy with God. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 18. Be not drunk with wine, inside which you have excess, but be filled with the Spirit. How are you filled with the Spirit? Speaking to yourselves in Psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. This is a secret of fullness of the spirit. A life overwhelmed with the spirit will connect with that kind of power that sees impossibilities. Being overwhelmed and number two, being overshadowed by the purpose of God. What does he mean to be? He said the power of the highest shall overshadow you. The power being overshadowed by the power and the purpose of God. What does it mean? More of you and none of me. His all my heart cries for Lord. May I decrease that you may. Increase, may you be the Lord of all. All of you and none of me. Is what my heart cries for, Lord. May I decrease that you may. Come to the point in your life where your own agenda is packed aside and the agenda of God becomes your agenda the plan of God becomes your plan the purpose of God becomes your purpose you will see power I don't have a personal plan I don't have a personal agenda my agenda is whatever God wants me to do and there is nothing he wanted me to do that is not sweet that is not interesting that is not exciting some people think it is a boring life if you don't have your own plan no sir it is the most exciting life actually God puts his plan in your, in your heart 
puts his desires in your, in your desires and then you suddenly begin to desire what God desires. You will see power. Somebody say amen. amen. Somebody say louder amen. amen. How many of you know that God will never lead you, lead you wrong? You know some people are afraid. They say if I ask God to give me somebody to marry, he will give me somebody I don't like. Lie. Fa, 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 fa. God will never give you something that is that does not line up with your natural compositions and desires. He doesn't, he wouldn't. He's not unrighteous, he's not an oppressor, and his commandments are not grievous. He doesn't grieve us with his declarations and commands. He doesn't. Nobody can say, if not that God wanted me to do this, I would have done this with my life. I am enjoying my life. What I'm doing, I'm enjoying my life. Nothing else I could have been doing beyond this. So don't be afraid. He knows the way through the wilderness. All you need to do is to follow him. He won't lead you wrong. Somebody say amen. When God called me into ministry, I had of us to go to the UK, myself and my wife to walk there, to live there, and several of us. Someone, somebody told me, say, even if God says you should be a pastor, why don't you go and do it in the UK? Oibo land is better than our land. I said, no, that's not where God is sending me to. It is here he's sending me to. By God's message, there is nowhere I want to live in the world I can't. Nowhere, nowhere that I want. That is by choice. By his message. Now. So living anywhere or traveling is not a testimony. We have visas that expire without it being used. For lack of reason to travel. <laughs> and time. The best place to be is in the center of God's will. And it will not grieve you. You want to see power such as you have never seen before. Subscribe to his will for you. On this Christmas day, I see somebody stepping into power. If you are that one, you stand up with a louder shout of amen. amen. Loud most shout of amen. amen. Loud shout of amen hold the hand of somebody near you and lift it up you give me a few minutes we shall be true it's Christmas day I thought we'll have an extensive healing and deliverance service but we already had healings and deliverances at the beginning of the service lift your hands please let all movements be restricted until we close in the next few minutes Lift the hand of somebody with you and just begin to thank God for the word we have received. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Shut up. Increase. May you be the Lord of. 